Hello YouTube. Today I'll tell you about Martian disasters and my research. It may be technical at times, uh, but I do know that uh, those who listen to me are intelligent people and curious ones. And you may want to look uh, beyond explanations provided by NASA and the Russian space program. A handful of Mars-bound spacecraft have been lost at the end of uh, last century. Over the 10 years, uh, two spacecraft from the Soviet, uh, Soviet Union disappeared in the same neighborhood. Both of the spacecraft contained laser devices. Phobos, an international project, was devoted to the investigations of Mars and its satellites. The Americans were eagerly and effectively helping with the project. I want to underline this. It was a joint project between Western and Russian scientists. Two interplanetary probes were launched in 1988 to examine the Martian moon Phobos. Uh, the Soviets were interested in the possibility of using Phobos as a staging post for a manned exploration of Mars. Phobos 1 was lost on its way to the Martian area. Phobos 2 had reached the moon Phobos and carried out some experiments before it was lost or annihilated. Among the images the second Soviet probe sent back before it malfunctioned or was destroyed by the huge UFO, there was one image and allegedly the last one that appeared to show a large object near Phobos. Analysis of this picture and of, a, a sh and of a picture showing what seems to be the shadow of the UFO on Mars reveals an object about 20 kilometers long. I received the picture back in 1991 uh, from Marina Popovich when she visited Los Angeles and found out about my uh, research of Russian ufology. Now, let's get back to Phobos. Each probe contained a complicated set of devices. Three television cameras, spectrometer, guidance systems, and video recording system. The onboard video spectrometric system, VSK, was created by international cooperation of the scientific and industrial facilities from the USSR, Bulgaria, and the German Democratic Republic. TV data were processed by the international team, including scientists from the USSR, Bulgaria, Germany, Finland, Great Britain, and the United States. But Phobos 2 also contained a strange laser device, the laser mass spectrometer analyzer or LIMA-D. It was built by experts at the Leningrad Institute of Precision Mechanics in collaboration with Finnish and East European scientists. The device was set to emit a laser ray at the surface of the moonlet, Phobos, in order to cause a mini explosion and gather data on the evaporated substances. In my book, the Soviet UFO files, uh, from 1998, I have described the Phobos disaster as well as Soviet views as to what had happened. Professor Burdakov, a well-known and respected Soviet scientist, very suspicious of the mission and strange events that led to the destruction of Phobos II, raised many questions and inquiries. He later hypothesized that if Mars is inhabited, its residents would not like the idea of a device placed on or near the planet's surface for continuous observations. So they made sure the device would not be placed on their planet. And the Soviets lost their probes. Well, 10 years went by and another spacecraft was sent to Mars. The Mars Polar Lander. That was a very interesting space vehicle. It was the first ever to be the first ever landing in the polar regions of Mars. The lander was equipped with cameras, a robotic arm, and instruments to measure the composition of Martian soil. 
the Mars Polar Lander, also known as the Mars Surveyor 98 Lander, was a 290 kilometer robotic spacecraft lander launched by NASA on January 3, 1999, to study the soil and climate in a region near the South Pole on Mars. It formed part of the Mars Surveyor 98 mission. On December 3, 1999, however, after the descent phase was expected to be complete, the lander failed to re-establish communication with Earth. There was no telemetry capability from the uh, Mars Polar Lander during the atmospheric entry, descent or landing. So the scientists say there is no way to know what exactly caused the demise of the space vehicle. Well, did you know that Mars Polar Lander contained a very strange device on board? It was called the Light Detection and Ranging LIDAR instrument provided by the Space Research of the Russian Academy of Science under the sponsorship of the Russian Space Agency. This was the first Russian instrument to fly on the United States planetary spacecraft. The LIDAR or LIDAR instrument was to look for ice and dust clouds, maybe. The LIDAR system was a laser sounder located on the Mars Polar Lander deck and composed of a sensor and electronics assembly. The LIDAR transmitter used a gallium aluminum arsenic laser that emitted energy and pulses at a constant rate and wavelength. The LIDAR had two sounding modes, active and acoustic. During acoustic sounding, the instrument sent out pulses of light and then timed their return in order to locate and characterize ice and dust hazes to a level of 2 to 3 kilometers. An acoustic device, the Planetary uh, Society's Mars microphone, was part of the LiDAR assembly. Well, it was gone, together with Mars Polar Lander. It is my belief that whoever dwells on Mars and its moons just doesn't like lasers or any other devices on board the spacecraft from our planet. We Earthling actually know very little about the stuff that goes aboard such spacecraft. Of course, the exception is the professional space scientists of NASA, JPL, the Russian Space Agency, the Chinese Space Agency, and of course, we hope that one day they will talk. Thank you so much.